all right guys welcome back to everything business today i'll be continuing from my previous video on double entry the double entry system all right in the last video i explained the principles or the concepts concerning the double entry system just in case you missed um that video please go back to the first video where i was talking about the double entry system and i was introducing the principles and concepts all right just to recap though the double entry system is a system of recording information accounting information um, that states that one transaction must be recorded two times right once on the debit side of a double entry account and once on the credit side the debit side of a double entry account is actually the left hand side of the double entry account and the credit side is the right hand side of the double entry account um, i spoke about there are two methods of teaching the double entry um, account or the double entry system right one method is what we call the payment and receiving method which is the not so correct method to teach double entry and there is also the correct method which is um, to learn the different types of accounts and to learn you know um, what you do if there's an increase and what you do if there's a decrease all right so today we're going to just be practicing some simple transactions all right and so you know if if you do not understand something that i i did you can always pause the video you can always rewind and you know and get it all right so let's look at these transaction now a transaction right is really doing business whether you are buying something or you are selling something right that is what a transaction is it's really doing business all right and so what you will find happening um for the csec exam is that you'll be you'll be you may be given transactions and then you will have to know right from the transaction you'll have to deduce which book to use to record um the information i want you to bear in mind that one transaction right um for one transaction there needs to be two entries in other words two accounts will be affected by one transaction it is important for you to remember that fact all right so let's start so we are looking at the first transaction we have three transactions here right the first transaction right and the year we're working with is 2020 what a year eh? so the year we're working with 2020 right so it says may 1 started business with five thousand dollars in the bank now whenever you see a transaction the first thing you should ask yourself is what two accounts will be affected by this one transaction the transaction would normally have clues right that will tell you the accounts that you need so let's look at these this transaction to see if we can find a clue it says that we started the business right with five thousand dollars now we know from our knowledge that if we are investing money in the business um that is called what capital did you say capital if you said capital then you are correct so because we are starting business because we are investing money in the business then this five hundred dollars here is what we call capital so right off the bat we know that we would need to make an entry in the capital account right and then it says we started business with five thousand dollars in the bank so we are putting money our own money investing our money in the bank or in a bank account therefore the bank is obviously the next account that we would need to have so the two accounts that we would need to have is capital and bank now that is the first question you need to ask yourself or you need to answer all right what two accounts would be affected we have identified that the capital account and the bank account um, would be affected all right so then the next thing to, to ask ourselves is um which account would we debit which account would we credit hmm all right so let's look at it the bank account is receiving some money isn't that so and based on you know a previous or a previous lesson if the account is receiving then that should be a, a, a what kind of entry debit or credit entry did you say debit that is correct so the bank account should be debited because it is receiving and another way to look at it too is that the bank 
right the money that we have in the bank is also an asset right it's not a fixed asset it's a current asset it's a current asset remember what i said about the asset account if an asset account is increasing we would normally make a debit entry so see we get back the debit so the bank account will be debited and if the bank account is debited right according to the double entry system there needs to be an equal uh, 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 equal um, credit entry so if the bank account is debited then the capital account must be credited and also I gave a tip in the last lesson that the capital account is always credited and if you use that tip then you cannot go wrong because if the capital account is credited it means that the bank account must be debited and if the bank account is debited it means that the capital account must be credited so for every debit entry there must be an equally corresponding credit entry and for every credit entry there must be an equally corresponding debit entry yeah just like that black white up down right good so then we know that the bank account must be debited capital account must be credited and the amount of money that we're going to be using is five thousand dollars so let us try and record this information now in our double entry account so the first thing we do we write the name of the account so this is our capital account i'm going to write capital i'm going to write account this is the abbreviation for account capital account right and because the capital account is to be credited which means we are going to be writing the information on the credit side that is what that is what it means when it says must be credited we are going to be writing the information on the credit side all right so we first start with our date 2020 right which is our year the year and then the date may 1 may 1 right and we know why we need to write the date if we don't have the date then we don't know when the transaction occurred so the date is very important please do not forget to put in a date all right after you write the date you are going to write the name of the other account that is affected by the same transaction now because we are recording in the capital account the other account to be affected by the, this this one transaction right is what did you say bank then you will be correct so we will write bank right here because bank is the next account or the other account affected all right by the transaction i put in my dollar sign right there and then now we are going to write the amount all right the amount would be five thousand dollars so we have now made a credit entry in the capital account and remember what i said if we make a credit entry then there must be a debit entry an equally corresponding debit entry so this is our bank account so let's write the name of the account please never forget to write your name if you don't write the name of the account then we have no way of knowing right that this was the bank account all right so let me just take this line out and give a little more space when you're doing your your recordings please be careful to give your account space all right so we start with the year again 2020 right may 1 the same transaction we are doing then we're going to be writing the name of the other account that is affected by the transaction which is capital and then we are going to write the amount of money involved in the transaction which is five thousand dollars and just like that we would have recorded successfully the first transaction all right so we made a debit entry in the bank account which is which means that the information is placed on the debit side of the bank account and we make a, we made a credit entry in the capital account which means that the information is placed on the credit side in the capital account all right and then now may 2 it says bought fixtures for 500 dollars by check all right we are buying fixtures for $500 by check again the transaction will tell you or will give you clues right on the two accounts that you need so the first question you ask yourself what two accounts do I need to record this transaction right okay so let's look at it 
hmm we are buying something what are we buying we are buying fixtures okay um and by the way fixtures are stuff like you know the light switch um the, the window pane yeah stuff like that the sockets in a building all these things are fixtures the trimming on the windows the trimming on the doors these things are, are fixtures just to beautify um the business place all right yeah so then we are buying fixtures hmm fixtures where did i hear that bef that word before yes you heard fixtures from the last lesson yeah right fixtures is an asset right it's a fixed asset because it will remain in the business for a long period of time and so then obviously fixtures would be one of the account yeah so fixtures is one of the account right all right so good we are buying fixtures and we are using we are using a check right now anytime you hear the word check in accounting you must always think about bank right because you know you change your check at the bank right not true yeah right and in and in and in jamaica we say we change the check at mr chin right but we're not going to say that but yeah you change the check at the bank all right so the check would be uh would give us a clue to the other account which would be bank all right so that's the first question we have successfully identified the two accounts that we would need then now what next we need to ask ourselves now which account should we debit which account should we credit or we can say which account is increasing which account is decreasing hmm think about it now i always tell my students this 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 other tip right whatever you are buying is increasing therefore i say whatever you are buying must be debited we are buying fixtures not true right so fixtures must be debited because fixtures is increasing another way to look at it is that fixtures is an asset account and also bank is an asset account while fixture is a fixed asset account and the bank is a current asset account the same principle governs both assets right because for fixtures if fixtures are increasing right then we need to debit and for bank which is an asset account as well if bank account is decreasing then it means that there should be a credit entry so we are going to debit fixtures account and we are going to credit the bank account right now we already have a bank account so we do not need to draw up another bank account all we need to do now is to draw our fixtures account so this is my fixtures account all right and we have our bank account there all right so we are going to now debit our fixtures account which means we are going to place the information on the debit side so let's just start with our date 2020 may 2 and we're going to place we're going to put next the name of the other account that is affected by this same transaction which is in this case the bank account bank and the amount that is involved five hundred dollars if we make a debit entry in one account then the other account must be a credit entry so in the bank account we go 2020 i have little space now may 2 then the name of the other account here which is fixtures i'm going to just write fix right mm -hmm. because i i don't have much space and then the amount is 500 dollars on the credit side right do you realize i didn't skip a line or anything right the two transactions they are in the same line all right good we're moving on now may 4. may 4 says put one thousand dollars of the money in the bank into the cash till in other words you are now taking money from the bank account and you are now put it putting it into the cash till or the cash register you're using it in the business all right now again first question i need to ask yourself what two accounts do i need to record this transaction right so you look at it two accounts that you would need hmm all right obviously i know that we would need bank because i see bank there yes bank account and also hmm can be put account because we don't have any put account can be money account hmm these are just words but oh cash cash is right here 
I wonder if we can have a cash account. Yes, we can have a cash account. In our previous lesson, when we were learning about assets, capital, and liabilities, we talked about uh, 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 cash being a current asset. Yeah, so cash is also a current asset. So both bank and cash are current assets and they are the accounts that we would use. So then, money is coming out of the bank and going into the cash account. So the cash account is getting more, isn't it? Yes. And the bank account is getting less. Good. And these are both asset accounts. And if the asset account is increasing, we should debit. And if the asset account is decreasing, we should credit. Right? Another way to look at it. The cash account is receiving. Mm, so we should debit. The bank account is paying. Therefore, it should be credited. So we identified the two accounts that we would need. And then we were able to identify the account that is increasing and the account that is decreasing. Or you can say the account that is receiving or account that is paying. So let us write, draw up our cash account because we don't have it yet. So cash account. And because the cash account is receiving, the information will be placed on the debit side. So we go 2020, the year, never forget that, May 4, and then you write the name of the other account that is affected, which is in this case, the bank account, you write bank, and then you write the amount of money, which is $1,000. For every debit entry, there must be an equally corresponding credit entry. So the other account is bank. So on the bank account now, in the bank account rather, you go May 4. Then you write the name of the other account here, which is cash. And then the amount of money involved, which is $1,000. And so we made a debit entry and we made a credit entry. All right. So let's review, right? We learned today that a transaction is really doing business right whether you're buying or selling something we learned that the double entry transactions right they contain clues that will tell you the account that you will need to make entries in we learned also that when you see a double entry transaction or when you see a transaction then you the first question you should ask yourself is what two accounts will be affected because that is the principle of the double entry that one transaction affects two two accounts all right, so you ask yourself what two accounts will be affected. And then after you ask yourself what two accounts will be affected, then you need to ask yourself what account is increasing, what account is decreasing. Or you can say what account is receiving, what account is paying. All right, but I would prefer you ask yourself what account is increasing and what account is decreasing. If you ask yourself that, then it is, it is quite likely that you, you know, you would be on the right track. Okay, all right, so... If you have any questions, please, you can send me an email. All right. My email is in the description below. All right. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share. And thank you for tuning in. Um, you can see more practice sessions. If you need more practice sessions um, with me, um, you can see my next video on the double entry system where I'll be doing just some questions, some random questions for you guys to get some practice and to understand. All right. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you for choosing everything business. Well, good. Bless up.